So I wanted to create a video to answer the question that keeps coming up. Will the Bulletproof coffee prevent autophagy? Okay, I've done videos on will it prevent, you know, ketosis, but now let's talk about autophagy. Autophagy is an amazing state. Uh, when you go into fasting mode, your body starts uh, repairing, you start recycling the damaged proteins and the microbes in the body and the viruses and the candida, starts cleaning up all this stuff. The need for vitamins and nutrients go way down because your body is in recycled mode. It gets very, very efficient. Uh, our bodies were designed um, tens of thousands of years ago um, to not eat very frequently. So we have this great uh, survival skill that helps us in many different ways. So it's like a self-cleaning oven, so to speak, in your cells. So what will stop autophagy? Glucose is right at the top of the list. Protein, cortisol. How do you get this? From stress, okay? Stress will shut that down like that. Not that you've ever experienced stress, but you probably know people who have. Eating will, will stop autophagy, okay? So we really wanna do fasting, low stress, and then not consume these. Fat has the least effect on insulin, so that's exciting. So let's say, for example, you're doing Bulletproof Coffee where you're adding some coconut oil or MCT oil or even butter, um, and you're doing like a lot of it, okay? Where there's like, I don't know, three, 400 calories. Yeah, well, that's gonna stop your autophagy. Absolutely, it's gonna block it. But if you're doing a small amount, let's say uh, one tablespoon of butter or one tablespoon of uh, MCT oil, it may uh, inhibit autophagy for a little bit, but I don't, I don't think it's gonna be that significant. Now, if you do half and half, it does have 1% carbohydrate and, one, and less than 1% uh, protein. So now we're getting into carbs, but these have no carbs, okay? So maybe you just do a very, very small amount of this, and that might be the ideal situation. But to get into autophagy really depends on several things. The amount of calories that you're consuming, which we just talked about, the more, the less autophagy we have. So it's a balance act. Also, your health state, your age. If you're 18 years old and have an incredible metabolism, you can probably get an autophagy way faster than someone going through menopause. But let's say you have a diabetic and you're on medication. Well, that's going to inhibit your autophagy too. So it really depends too on your health state. The worse your health is, the more strict that you need to be with these things. The healthier you are, the more you can get away with this, okay? The faster the metabolism, the more you can get away with this. Okay, let's say, for example, you exercise. Well, that will help you get into autophagy because that's one of the triggers. So, because um, you're actually creating this stress on top, you're not eating, so you're gonna create more autophagy. As long as you recover, because we don't wanna increase too much cortisol from the excessive uh, stress that you just created. Also, there's another factor of how long you're fasting. Let's say, for example, you're doing one meal a day. Well, that's great, because you're gonna have a lot of hours to, do, uh, to get into autophagy, right? Um, I would imagine you get into a really good autophagy right around 18 hours. It could be 16 hours. It could be a little bit later. It really depends on, they don't really know exactly, but. I'm just using that as a good ballpark number, 18 hours of fasting, okay? So if you're, let's say you're getting exactly 18 hours or 17 hours and you're doing this, well, you're probably not gonna get the benefits as compared to doing um, your fasting, let's say at uh, 20 hours and with a four hour window of eating, okay? So there's, you can see that it's not a simple answer. You have to look at all these factors and, and use a judgment on this. But uh, the longer the fast, the more you can get away with this, okay? And also how much insulin you have in your body because insulin will block autophagy too. So you say, well, I don't have any more carbohydrates. Well, you may have insulin resistance. And insulin resistance causes your own body to make it more insulin, like five to seven times more 
that extra insulin can keep you from experiencing the benefits of autophagy. And this is why the autophagy benefits, even living longer and better skin and anti-aging occur more over time of doing a healthy keto and intermittent fasting plan because you're you're building on this, your, your body's becoming more efficient, your insulin is coming way, way down, okay? So it's really a balance, a balancing act. Um, there's a certain uh, hormone factor called GIP that's located in your small intestines. And this is triggered when you eat. So it amplifies the effects of insulin. So it's not just a matter of avoiding carbs, it's a matter of also keeping your calories really low. Okay, but I would imagine if you're in pretty good shape and you just do a small amount of one of these in your coffee, um, I don't think it's going to be a big problem. Okay, but you have to test it out and see. See if you're getting the benefits, that you're better skin, feeling younger, the cognitive improvements. Um, and by the way, as a side note, and I'm going to do a separate video on this, vitamin D is, will help you get an autophagy more. So sun is really good too. So if we combine sun with exercise, with fasting, it'll improve your uh, potential for autophagy benefits. All right, so I think I covered all the points and I will see you in the next video. So if you're enjoying this content, go ahead and share it with someone that could really benefit from it.